Empiricism, The Basics, and Hobbes. History of Psychology, Professor Michael Botwin, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno. Now, the empiricist believed that all knowledge was derived from experience. In other words, they take kind of an Aristotelian view that all knowledge is brought from the outside rather than the inside, as Plato did. Now, I can't remember when and where I found this picture, but there's a lot of sensory experiences on it. To the empiricist, sensory experience is the primary source of data, the primary way they look at things. So, I found you a picture full of sensory stimulation. You've got everything from Brad Pitt to pizza to Dan and yogurt to drumsticks, and I'll let you figure everything else out on your own. But remember, the empiricists all are looking at the experiences that we have through our senses. Now, the empiricists are going to say that all knowledge itself begins with sensory experience. But remember that just having an experience does not give you knowledge. Doing something does not lead to knowledge. Observing something does not lead to knowledge. It's how you process. And this is where you're going to find differences across empiricist thinkers. That sensory data. When you're looking at empiricism, they talk about mental experience as well. And they talk about things like dreams and images, fantasies, things that we can think about as inner experiences. Vivid experiences are things like math, which are always going to have certain rules and operations and always have correct answers, which makes them more vivid than things like dreams and fantasies and images which may not have a correct answer and may just be a collection of different sensations. Now let's talk about our first empiricist scholar, Thomas Hobbes. Hobbes was considered the founder of British empiricism, and one thing that we have to remember as we go through and study the empiricist is that it's primarily a British enterprise. Now, Hobbes believed that all knowledge was derived from physical information or physically getting into the senses. And behavior, in turn, can be explained simply in terms of physical loss. He believed that humans were basically selfish and that you need a society to provide constraints on individuals or they do whatever they would want to. He believed that democracy was a dangerous thing primarily because individuals can vote to take away things. He believed that democracy was dangerous because people could vote to take away the things of other people and would eventually lead to chaos. The Hobbes the best form of government was an absolute monarchy with a ruler that kept human behavior in check. Kind of a negative view of human nature that we're all fundamentally selfish. I found this quote a while ago from a quote engine, and I think it really explains Hobbes' ideas here very well. He says, the condition of man is a condition of war. Everyone against everyone. Well, that's chaos and anarchy. And Hobbes really believed that without government, that's what would happen. We would all be constantly fighting each other. He was very influenced by Kepler and Galileo, their ideas of physics and of astronomy and bodies in motion. And he made the analogy that humans are bodies in motion and societies are groups of humans moving in a certain direction. Now, if you look at the history of social psychology, later in the 1950s, you see an eminent social psychologist, 
Kurt Levine developing a similar idea called field theory where one thing affects something else and other things are then in turn affected by the movement of stuff such. Now incidentally Levine was influenced by Einstein and his field theories in physics. So some things never change. Now for Hobbes, the mind is simply the tum sum total of an individual's thinking activities. So whatever you're thinking about is your mind. He was a physical monist and denied the existence of a non-material mind. In fact, the denial of a non-material mind or what we would also call a soul got him in a lot of hot water with the religious individuals of his time. The Hobbes, the mind and body are physical structures and the mind only contains sensory experiences and we get those sensory experiences by processing sensory information. So for Hobbes, simple cognitive experiences are the result of sensory experiences. We develop complex experiences in turn by putting together those simple experiences. Now Hobbes had a view on hedonism as well and he believed that external events stimulate the body as well as the mind. Not too big of a stretch is it? He believed that human behavior was motivated by appetites and an appetite had to do with seeking or maintaining pleasurable experiences. Aversion was the avoidance or termination of painful experiences. Now, he derives this one step further and he goes out and says, there are no objective moral properties. What is good simply pleases an individual or is good for them. He uses this to tackle one of the big philosophical issues by saying, there is no free will. He says, our choice is simply labeling things that we're attracted to or have aversions to. So we choose to do pleasurable things naturally and we avoid doing things that don't feel good. So we really don't have any free will. We're simply hedonistic beings following our pleasures. Now he develops two laws of association that are fundamental in understanding how things work together. And you've seen these things before. Contiguity, simply a sequence of things. And remember, you remember things because sensations come ordered in time. Or we experience something very frequently. And he uses contiguity and frequency to explain things like memory, learning, and perception. A little typo with the it there. Cross out the it from your video. So Hobbes starts the pace. He believes that sensations are everything and how we process sensations are fundamental to how we behave. We don't have any knowledge before we learn it through the senses. We follow our pleasures and we avoid our pains. Other empiricist scholars will build on this as we go through the history of psychology. See you next time. Bye now. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2020. Professor Michael Botwin. All rights reserved.